In 1920, the passage of the 19th Amendment gave women voting rights, and that same year, the first two females were elected to the Oklahoma State Legislature. But by the 1950s, no women were serving as lawmakers. Then, in the 1970s, women started running again, and there was a surge of female lawmakers. But now, the numbers have plateaued, and today, women are way underrepresented at the Capitol. The Oklahoma State Capitol is brimming with people during the legislative session. You will see as many women as men roaming the halls, gathering in the rotunda, and conducting business. But the sea of men and women is not representative of the actual number of female lawmakers serving here. There are only 20 total, four in the Senate and 16 in the House. Oklahoma ranks 48th, 49th in the nation for women serving in the um, uh, state legislature. And that's about half of what the national uh, rates are. Uh, nationally, generally, uh, legislatures are about 24, 25 percent women. In Oklahoma, it's 12.8 percent. Cheryl Lovelady is a political analyst who encourages women to get into politics. We find that women raise money just as well as men, and women win elections at the same rate as men when they run. But she says not enough women are running for office. Lovelady believes that's because women need to be recruited, and the men doing that job seek out people like themselves. State Senator Constance Johnson agrees. Every time our party goes out and looks for candidates, they're not looking for women because they're men. And they believe that men are these special beings and that women aren't. So they're just looking according to their own orientation. Do you find it's still very much a good old boys club? or has Absolutely. Has it changed? Not really, I don't think. But um, I'm not a good old boy, but I am a runner. And so I found that's been a common denominator because if you're involved in sports, a lot of times that opens up the conversation for you. State Representative Jeannie McDaniel is now in her ninth year in the legislature. McDaniel says she has actually found common ground with more men than women. I find many more men, in fact, um, sometimes coming on board with DHS changes, grandparents raising grandchildren, foster care, food stamps. I'm finding there are many men who understand those challenges. And on women's issues, I find more men agree with me than women. Really? Absolutely. Look at the votes on women's, uh, women's rights. Yes. McDaniel loves her job and encourages other women to run for office. She's pleased to see young women like State Representative Emily Virgin in office. Virgin was first elected in 2010, and in only a short time, she has seen the quiet power of women. That is one of the most important and um, striking things that I've seen since I've been here is that women are much more likely, I feel, to reach across the aisle and try to focus on what we have in common rather than what divides us. What I have found is that the dialogue really changes when women are in the room. Uh, women tend to be more collaborative, they're more network thinkers, and less about getting credit for something and more about getting something done. So women make fantastic legislators. I heard early on, and I think it's true, if you don't mind not having your name on it, you can get a lot done. And I would say that probably some of the things that I feel that I have accomplished the most may not have my name on them, but they definitely have my footprint on them. Well, thank you. And you can talk to me anytime or since. State Representative Pam Peterson is the first woman to serve as House Majority Floor Leader. She says because women think differently than men, they are much better at building consensus. We're used to uh, multitasking and trying to fix problems, whether it's in our, our family and relationships or whatever. So I think we're very solution oriented and uh, I, I think we do well in this environment for the most part. Peterson believes one reason there are not more females in the legislature is because women who are mothers can't make the sacrifice of commuting to the state capitol. For me personally, if I had small children, I probably wouldn't want to spend four days out of the week in Oklahoma City, you know, in a one-room apartment uh, away from my family. The hours can also be grueling. <laughs> Katie Henke was elected to the House last November. She actually had to endure two campaigns because the results of the first election were disputed and the Oklahoma Supreme Court said a winner could not be determined. I think a lot of women don't get involved because of the negativity of campaigning. 
And unfortunately, that's kind of what it's come to. Hinky was a teacher when she decided to run for office last year. She says she never aspired to be in politics, but felt more teachers needed to have a voice at the Capitol. A bill she authored to revamp the controversial A through F school grading system has already cleared the House and is now in the Senate. Hinky says if she can do it, so can others. We need to do a better job as Oklahomans and in our districts of encouraging young women to get involved. I think a lot of times um, they just don't really think that they're qualified or that they can do this job and they absolutely can and we need them. Hinky and Virgin are among the youngest lawmakers at the Capitol. Their elder stateswomen are most encouraging. I think it's going to be these young women in their 20s who are going to step up and make the difference and I know that that we'll be there when we're in our 70s and 80s saying, yeah, go for it.